What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today, we'll be taking a look at this week's forecast, seeing what the stars have in store for us. So, let's get into it. As always, shout out to all the Scorpio celebrating birthdays this week. Pay close attention to this energy as it'll be with you all year. So, starting off, oh, happy Halloween. Let me start with that. You know, uh, those of you who know me know I love holidays and what they signify and all of that. So <clears throat> in this conscious community, there's all types of perspectives and people who will feel their way, how they feel about Halloween and its programming. And uh, to that, I just say, do thy will, you know, uh, create, express, do your thing. These are, <clears throat> you can look at it as a, a positive Neptunian uh, escape, right? So <clears throat> we are starting off, uh, the week with Mars going into Scorpio, where it's going to join the sun that's in Scorpio. Now, I told you guys last week that it will be revealing in terms of our personal motivations. And with Mars here, it's really, really going to ramp it up and give it some direction or highlight the fact that we need direction. This coincides with the sun squaring Saturn. So the sun is squaring Saturn first, and then we know Mars is trekking behind, so it's going to square it too. Now, what we stand to learn from this is how we can better overcome our possibly unconscious uh, sabotage ways or unconsciously understand how uh, we go away from Saturn and through the deeper motive, rediscovering our motivation for things, find a solution to overcome whatever those obstacles entail. Okay. All right. So I want to talk a little bit more about the sun square Saturn and particularly because it's involving uh, Saturn being in, in Aquarius. How I see this translating, particularly in these next couple of days when it's really tight, is a complete rebellion against our routine. Whatever needs Saturn, right, the mundane, the discipline, the focus, we can naturally just be opposed to that. And because it's Aquarius, it's in, in playing into the theme of right now, that can come in the form of like, oh, instead of working for someone else, I need to be working for myself. And, you know, a uh, thing I love doing, people who talk to me and tell me like, oh, I just feel like I don't have enough time in the day, right? And I will say, you know, a simple thing is call out one day because we can all afford to, right? Call out and take the time. Now, the sun square Saturn in this scenario will, it, it will reveal to you the issues or where you're lacking this Saturn, why you're not, uh, where you're undisciplined or you take the time and like, nah, I actually need to, to dig in. So this can this can be be a time of rediscovering or reorienting like your routine, or like I said, just your your Saturn, your Saturn, where you need to show up more in that area. Maybe take a more professional uh outlook or all of these the seeds of this type of motivation are all things coming up. So that is leans over to uh, Mars quinquenuxing the North Node. So, like I said, Mars isn't squaring Saturn yet, but in this conversation, uh, th this is part of the understanding. So, the North Node in Gemini can represent indecision or opportunity, opportunity of a variety. As a Gemini type person, one thing the Zodiac has helped me uh, understand is like the power of Scorpio or Sag, which is different than my natural function, right? Where they have more of a one-pointed, focused will, right? The Gemini will is like, hey, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So with these energies right now, that can be coming to a head internally or something that you kind of got to like you know, uh, lock in with, okay? So 
as I tell y'all, as I give y'all this advice, it applies to myself. So, you know, that's that. So lots to be gained with our motivations and kind of needing to lock in in a particular direction for now. And if you do that, then you get the, the, the good part of Mars and Scorpio, which is focused action, determination, silent will, non-impulsive, calculated, researching, engulfed within what it's doing. So it can be really revealing depending on where that is in your chart right now. Um, then I want to talk about Venus uh, finishing up its transit of Sagittarius, which I've been loving. Uh, and, and, you know, a couple of you guys who know about, you know, Deccans, if you don't look it up, it, in short, it's sub rulers. You know, it's part of how you can see the zodiac work deeper in the chart uh, for yourself in the collective. So, Venus is here in the last Deccan of Sag, which is corresponds to Leo, which has a sun influence, okay? So uh, this is also highlighting with the sun, Venus, Scorpio, highlighting the need to go deeper into our studies, uh, be, be more kind of obsessed with them, which it can translate like really well if channeled uh, correctly. The next uh, insight with this is like coming off of the retrograde and it's going to lead me to the next aspect I talk about, uh, there can be a reconnection with an old project, an old philosophy, old like mentors. The retrograde effect can come around this week in the matter of like through Sagittarius, an old, some something old you love. Like I just named it, right? But it can also be a person. Uh so, and then that will be enlightening within itself. It'll be like a jolt of inspiration in some manner, right? Uh, so then by the end of the week, Venus goes into Capricorn, which is all leading back towards construction, focus, putting things uh, like it manifesting and, and, and getting structured, right? So when that happens in these next couple of weeks, we're going to be feeling uh, more material minded. Uh, and, and able to build off of, so in Sagittarius, we kind of rediscovered a love for something, and then in Cap, we're gonna build on it. All right, then bringing me to Mercury trying Jupiter. Now, I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago how Mercury talked to Jupiter on its way, uh, retrograding, and then. Jupiter was retrograde too. Now Jupiter is direct. Mercury is direct. Come back. Going to make the same aspect, which is good. So this is translating into like very enlightening type of energy, right? Personal clarity, uh, philosophical or spiritual clarity. I want to tell you, don't question yourself right now. Know what you know. If you need guidance, go get it and have it reinforced, all right? Um, Seek it out. Or if someone comes to you to play that role of Jupiter, like I said, have confidence in your words and give them, um, give them the perspective. Because the fact of the matter is, if you've been on your spiritual journey for a while, you should know what you know, right? Uh, I give a great example of this. Even it's been going on with in, in my, you know, practice as a late. Couple people, you know, it happens every once in a while, not too common. Hey, I don't have a birth time. Um, can you still give me a reading? I'm like, I'll be like, hell yeah, right? And then through that, because you know, there's all types of processes, but there's just the way astrology works is that it works, it works. You're born that day, that's your energy. We can read you, right? But anyway, I, I, I say all that to say this the birth time, we could look at it the birth time and like it as logical reassurance. Yeah, we know it goes into the terminal or whatever, so we have to have that. And it does determine. But in a certain sense, you still know yourself. And the point is to know thyself. So you don't... The, not having a birth time in astrology and then still studying astrology can actually like like surge your intuition and self-knowledge by under, arriving at that you know rectification in that manner versus just like, 
oh, this is who I am. So that thing within the self is kind of like what I'm saying with like Mercury trying Jupiter right now. You know what you know. We won't be too arrogant, but there, to be within the spirit, you do kind of have a, a, a certain uh, self-assurance or, or a flow, you know, being that flow state. Okay, so this is my interpretation of this week's energy. I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to chime in. Let me know what's going on in your world. If you have subscribed to my channel, you can do so now. If you need a reading, click the description link. Send me an email. We'll set something up. Till next time, peace.